So, earlier we learned how to build an optimal binary space partitioning tree, and figured out how to traverse this tree from front to back. And maybe you're already making your own similar Doom shooter, but if you're a bit stuck, this video will explain how we can use our 2D tree to create a 3D level using the Railab library. It will not be as detailed as the previous series and I will only cover the basics and important points, but you can find all the source code in this video in the description. From the previous video you may be interested in why we need binary space partitioning if we render all segments of the map anyway, and this question will be revealed gradually, but the first thing we will do is that when traversing the BSP tree we will not add to the render list those segments that are not facing us, and as a result we will not render them, that is, polygon segments hidden from us will never participate in rendering. And in order for us to learn how to render 3D models, we should consider the concept of camera. This will be a class in which we will have access to the camera object created by means of Railab library with the position and direction of the camera, which we define in the test level file in the settings dictionary along with the seed value. We also need to specify the vector up, the value of the vertical field of view and the projection type, and we define some of these values in the settings file. And when we create an instance of the camera in the engine class, we can use a method to render 3D models. This method uses two commands to start and end 3D mode, where we pass a reference to the camera object, and in between these commands we render all of our 3D models, and let's say we put a grid model here as some floor. And as a result we can see the rendering of this grid model, where the camera is looking in the direction we specified. And now let's see how to control our camera, and unlike the standard camera implementations that you will find in the Railab library examples, this engine will be frame rate independent, and therefore our camera will be more complex and tailored to our needs. And first of all, all keystroke handling will be implemented in the input handler file. Here we have the key class, where we define the keys for our control, and in the input handler class we check the presses of these keys, and call the corresponding methods of the camera instance. So, our camera is in the XZ plane, and for the camera we define its initial position and target. This data is enough for us to calculate forward and right vectors, thanks to which we can make steps in all directions. And so in the camera class we will have a method to update the vectors, where we compute the forward vector as the normalized difference between the target and the camera position, and find the right vector using the cross product of the forward and up vectors. There are also methods for initializing the step and speed of the camera taking into account delta time, methods for changing the step along the forward and right vectors when the corresponding key is pressed, and a method for correcting the step when moving diagonally. And we also need a move method with which we will move the position and target of the camera by a step amount. And thus we get the ability to move along the grid in all directions, and now it remains to implement the code for rotating the camera with the mouse. And at this stage we will realize the rotation of the camera only around the y-axis, which will be more in line with the control concept of the first Doom, and this type of rotation is called yaw. And the basic idea is that once we get the relative rotation value of the mouse on the x-axis, we rotate the forward vector by the same value, and add the result to the camera position to get the new camera target position. And so we have a basic control of our camera, where we can move and rotate it, and now let's look at the approach and implementation of how to render our 2D segments as 3D wall models. And for this purpose we will use the models class, in this class we will create a list of all wall models, and in the future there will be models of ceilings and floors. And we will create wall models only for raw segments, this is done for performance purposes, because during binary space partitioning one segment can be split into several segments. And if a segment is partitioned, the resulting new segments will have a reference to the model of the original raw segment, so when traversing the tree, we render only one wall model instead of multiple models. And to create a model of the wall for each segment is used corresponding class, where in the method getModel, first of all, we build the mesh of this wall, and the mesh of the wall is a quad of two triangles, here we need to define for the four vertices of the quad its normals, texture coordinates are calculated based on the length of the segment, we take the height of the wall for one unit and define the coordinates of the vertices, and we also need to set the indices of these vertices to build two triangles of the quad. And since the Railab library uses foreign function interface for Python from C, we need to make these arrays from Python understandable for C, and it is necessary to correctly specify the data types for the corresponding attributes. 
and for texture we use procedural generation of chest texture with some color randomization to distinguish segments. And in order to create an instance of the model's class and render them, we will use the view renderer class. Here in the update method we iterate through the list of segments obtained by traversing the BSP tree. And here we form a set of wall model indexes, which we will render using the draw method. And as you can see we've created 3D wall models from 2D segments, at the moment it looks something like Wolfenstein, but we've gone this far to create more interesting level geometry, and in the next series we'll look at how to set up more complex levels that have different floor and ceiling heights, as well as stairs and windows.